Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So it is now part three of the Let's Play Earth of the Desolation series. And the last video, I had done two battles in a row against the scavenger enemies. There is now a third battle, which is, should be the final wave, difficulty hard. So let's get into it. So once again, there are two, four, six characters left, and the enemies have increased once more. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen enemies now. So, actually, this six characters is really just four characters. So, four plus my six is ten against fourteen. Okay. So I'm just taking a look at this to see how I can organize to make this work. Like for example, I'm going to swap that archer into place and maybe put my two characters into this position. And then this guy is going to probably just swap that one forward. All right, hopefully this will work. I heard what's going on here. We are warriors and fighting in, the, in our whole way of life. You seem to need any help you can get, haha, <laughs> so let us help you. So I guess that if he talked, it usually means he's going to join you if he lives. So, let's start by swapping and attacking one of these enemies. And I'm going to want to cut down their numbers as much as possible early on. So let's go after those kind of ranged enemies. And if I move back, swap once, swap twice, I can get him further back. So Javelinier with three range can't attack. Now, as I said, that's one of the really big weak points of the Javelinier. Easier support, but much more awkward when it comes to uh, being otherwise useful. I'm just gonna swap these characters back. And wait, and I'm going to swap him, maybe, and swap once again to be ready to fight here. The monk, I will just leave here for now. And then I'm gonna have my defender swap. See? And yeah. So, Javanir gets shot up twice. Three times. But that one missed, fortunately. Oh boy, once again the AI does crazy movements, charges in when he shouldn't, he's probably dead. And ideally I would shoot down these archers, but I don't really see an opportunity to do so. So let's make the most out of killing characters right from the start. Uh, 
I'm going to lifesteal this character as well as my monk. And then I'm going to swap once and swap twice to put the allied archer in front. And I'm going to leave these characters here. Or maybe I'm gonna move up, kill. Swap him so that I can bash this guy. It's really attack here. Still shooting my archers instead of their own. Shooting my archers instead of the AI ones. It's actually. Yeah. Okay, see? So that guy moved up and he got ram killed into the death zone. Like I said, AI is terrible in keeping the characters alive. Alright, I don't think I have much choice. I'm gonna swap up. Start blasting away. He's already healing, so I'm gonna wait for now. And I'm going to. He has Lightfoot, so I'm just gonna swap in first, kill off this guy, and then swap again. And maybe I'm just gonna. My primary archer. Swap him back to relative safety. There we go. So I can last stand him, and I can also life steal to make sure he lives. And then I'm going to swap and move here. Wow, you knocked me down. Focus on the north for now. Good. Deflection! Maneuver. 
maneuver north. Is he stuck? Elevation 3. Elevation 4. No, he's not stuck. I should be able to move. But I can't for some reason. Immobilized, that's why. Okay, that's fine. Axeman go. Not for a while, it looks like. Maybe I'll just jump over. And that way I can get a surround hit and get a crit out of it. Lifesteal, the javelinier, and crush this guy. They're coming up to south. Is there anyone I can rotate over? Now that he got knocked down, not really. So I'm gonna have to run these guys. My archers will flee. Retreat. Fire away and heal up. stand here for now. I don't want to face off against two, but I can fight one. Yeah. So the AI archer got surrounded. Clearly going to have to retreat further. There's just too much here. Hmm. 
just gonna come down here. Maybe fire away at him for now. And I have an opportunity with my shield man to bash this guy into the death tile. Perfect. steel and then the attack or I'll get some rings <laughs> got out of range support so maybe I should get Urturk a bit more stamina he's out of breath If I last stand him, maybe I can just Aegis with my archers. And uh, I'm gonna swap here, move up, and I'm going to bash this guy. And surround this guy. around this guy. Archers alive is kind of top priority for me right now, but uh, maybe I can just swap and fire. Disengage and kill. And then. Bonus speed, might as well use it. Rejuvenation, might as well use that. Hastening. Maybe on my archer here. Rejuvenation, maybe I'll cast it on him. And Aegis. Let's toss it onto the Javanir. 
and I'm going to ram this guy back. He moves almost right away. So I'm just gonna have a bunch of fire then. Three archers left. Wop up. See, 18 stamina, it means he attacked himself for 40 and then launches a range attack for 40. So let's have... Swap, move up, range attack with a strike. And... Uh, too far away? Final shot, and the battle is over. Couldn't take up the archers early, but I was able to tank all the hits and survive. They got a rare silver javelin. Rare silver chain mail, some trillium, some medicine that I can use, and the bounty hunter with the flail joined me as well. So the bounty hunters use mauls and have iron chain mail, but I have a lot of characters who need chain mail. Still, I can equip that onto him for now and get rid of that. The rare silver javelins. They're really pushing me to use this javelin here, aren't they? Because <laughs> I got. First, I got a silver javelin, then I got a rare silver javelin. Annoying. And I do have a maul, so. Strong body, vigorous blow, and stunning blow. A stunner versus. My uh, monk that can jump around, right? Flip, jump. Hard to say who is actually better. You can jump around and get additional damage, or you can have a potential stun when you crit hit.
But the thing is, he doesn't have that great survivability with because he has no armor at all. While this guy has both plus 40% max hit points and armor. So maybe that kind of determines it. Yeah. Let's change it up. At this point. because I'd really have to buff up this guy's hit points to make him live. And I think in larger battles against lots of enemies, he's gonna drop off. That's the thing. Like in these battles where I can have him jump around everywhere, he's been pretty good. But in the long term, I think I'm gonna need more frontliners to tank hits. So yeah, I'm gonna send them off. And instead, so he's going to start exploring for me. Right, so I'm gonna send him off to scavenge. There we go. Wait, did I leave some... I think I left some mutators on the guy. And I won't have access to him again for a week. Oh well. So be it. Too late to adjust. I said I want 122 stamina. On him. So I'm going to orient towards reaching that point. And I'm gonna continue to pump up stamina on Gig. And Herda is going to focus on increasing agility to 82 first. There we go. Interesting, why was agility increasing by three just now? Is it because of light weapons plus 10% stamina? I guess so. That was pretty convenient. Now I can boost up hit points and damage and so on, maybe. All right, so character builds have been good so far. I got some light foots to extract. Oh, nice. Don't want the first two. I need the light foots and I need, I want the monster heart. Let's extract one of them and keep 42 life essence. That way he can have a light foot. Like everyone else. And the monster heart will give 15% hit points to whoever I throw it onto. Which I'm probably gonna do on my priest for now. Looking pretty good. Missions. Nope. So 43, 31 at Jill, 20, 19, 17, 19. So let's reserve him and battle him. Whoops. Put him on the very bottom. There we go. Slowest to fastest. And actually, maybe I'll swap the armors because he only has one, whereas this guy wears two. So they can both have roughly equal protection. Yep, that looks perfect. If I can get a better helmet and shield for that guy, I'll be golden. Or actually, let's just spread out the armors this way. Make everyone has a, have a acceptable amount of protection this way. Perfect. So I'm not going to extract this last one, as I said, keeping sufficient life essence to keep picking and choosing perks is important. And yeah, so I'm here and I should capture the village now. So eight town watch now. The first battle was six. Now it's eight. As the days pass, the enemies do get steadily stronger. So it's important to keep up efficiency as you move around. Now, the thing with attacking is you have to start at the lower level. Let's be toggle elevations. 
And the annoying thing about elevations is you can only move up from like three to four and four to five. If three to five is not possible. So for example, if all these tiles are blocked with these fences, I can't move up on this side at all. So it's about finding a location or an area where you can move up and deploy in there. The other side of this though is the javelin mirrors do have a use because they have a raised terrain and lower terrain. So they're like the one character that can let you can move up, as it were. And it looks like it's only this area here that has a tile for me to move up. Everywhere has these darn fences. Or I could raise the terrain here and allow everyone to pass through. Raise this to four, and then everyone can move up here. And I think that's actually best because if I move up here, I'm kind of in danger of these enemies. But if I move up here, I get more time. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Oh, this is an enemy! I was so confused. I was like, why do I have seven characters? There's an enemy right here. Okay. So... Let's start like this then. Surrounded and an easy kill. Let's start the battle. Oh, he was press ganged. Okay. Unfortunately, I already surrounded him. And see, if I had deployed here, then he wouldn't be a threat. And then I could wipe out these enemies. But as it is, I have to kill him. That's too bad. I should have thought of that, actually. They won't have a guy so spread out from the others unless there was a reason. Oh well, free kill. I won't complain about that. For now, let's start by life stealing a few heroes, maybe? Maybe even yourself? He's gonna go one, two, three. Yep. You was an unfortunate soul indeed. And I'm not sure I want to quite trigger them yet, given my currently awkward kind of positioning. So maybe I'll just swap for now. Oh, they trigger. They trigger themselves. Okay. Fine, then I'm gonna move up. Wait with the healer. Let's the attack. Range support one, range support two. Let's slowly move up. Swap 
drop in. Life steal. Maneuver forward. And release strike. And if I have the javelin here, move up. We can toss a range attack there. Just going to have him wait here because he can move three then actually swap for a fourth tile of movement I think I'll surround this guy like this yeah that's too bad this battle was a guaranteed extra character if I have left him alone but uh kind of regret that but nothing I can do Like that, he couldn't come up, so he would have wrapped all the way around to where I am to come up. And by that time, I should have killed off everyone at the top here. But I don't really need the Blood Knight anyway, so it's okay. I would have used him for just scavenging. It's just a bit of resource loss, in other words. So they are marching up. I will just hold up and wait for my other characters. My party hasn't fully gathered together yet. So I'm just gonna life steal a whole bunch of units in the meantime. Footman's coming up. You can swap him back. Could have him attack, but then I get struck. So I'm just gonna move one tile back, or a few more tiles back to avoid that crossbow. surrounding this guy and melee attacking so that both archers can range the port. Next, let's move him and have him ram and lock back. And then I'm going to swap in, line up, and strike. kill let's fire and kill and I'm going to swap with the javelinier instead because the javelinier's can actually fight at range because they can toss over characters while hunters need to be right next to the enemy Gets shot up. Healer can just move up and kill. Now I'm gonna swap and maneuver to start ripping up this guy. do that again. Make the most use of my range support. So the high agile is kicking in right now. I'm gonna place right here. And 
get the finish. He ran out of actions. Swap for next. Strong versus range. Just gonna move back. Life steal. Maybe life steal two characters. An attack. You get the finisher with my range support. I want to get surrounded, so I'm going to swap in again. Looks like I'm lacking range support. Yep, so no more range support for both of those. Due to lack of stamina. Swapping. Swapping. Moving. Striking. Swapping, killing, maneuvering, killing, and then it's just one last enemy. Maybe I'll just swap, smack, finish. Now all its valuables and resources are yours. So, a steel shield, trillium, and life essence. Steel... It's kind of funny though, in this game, steel is offers less defense than silver. Like, figure that out, right? Silver looks prettier, but it certainly is not harder than iron. Or, than steel, sorry. But, in any case... Fantasy worlds. Huh. I was considering hitting the next stamina point. I think I'm gonna do it. So the next stamina point is. A hundred and what? Fifty two. So let's keep increasing that. Eighty two is good enough for the staff wielder, right? So I'm going to continue to bump up the vitality like crazy. If we can get a few more fixed skins, that would be a bonus for when I absorb it. And Herda is going to get... It's really whether I want a third attack. I don't think I do. So let's focus on vitality for now. We can increase the strength later. Bleeding crits, improviser, 87, do I need a bleeding crit? I have one, I will need one for Urturk. So might as well buy it now or hold off. I won't need it for a while though. Looks like because I have the poison, I have to absorb at least the range support, which takes three more battles. Well, you know what? Let's just buy it. Better to have it on hand 
for when I need it. And close this. So he forms an attachment to range support, five more battles, attachment to fixed skin, attachment to light foot, sure. I think eventually you're gonna replace your characters. Like as you find characters with more skills that they start off with and so on, you're probably gonna replace them. But for now, we got a pretty good party. And I'm gonna search this site. So search the tunnels. Man-made tunnels. Let's search it. It's in the dark and dusty tunnels beneath the village. The farmer suggested great treasures may lie within the sealed halls, but danger may also lurk below, away from the light. This is the very reason their long dead ancestors sealed the tunnels from the world above. Unseal! After unsealing the gate, you search the rooms and find an ancient altar. Upon the stone table is perched a relic. It is the relic of Pelmi. You grab it and hurry out of there. What does this relic do? Oh, plus 80% max hit points. So that renders pretty much whoever equips it unkillable, doesn't it? Nice. That's actually kind of insane. So if I toss it onto him, for example, he has 1600 hit points, just like that. And then who else might actually be in danger of dying? I don't even know. They all have pretty good defense and so on right now. But if I need it, you know, throw the 25% wine on to someone else for now. And I can also give the bleeding critical to him until I need it on Urturk and so on. There we go. Hidden cave. Nothing there. So obviously I'm going to head towards the hidden cave. Could also kill this party, but I'm trying to chase it down is annoying. So let's head to the hidden cave. Investigating this location. You discover the hidden entrance to a cave. Descending deeper, you come across a group of unusually dressed individuals engaged in some kind of ritual. They're using defenseless villagers in an offering. Easy battle. But uh, actually, I'm going to end this video here. Thanks for watching, everyone. Nitro out.